on the phone for about three hours or four hours. Oh, wow. Busy man, huh? <laughs> well, everybody wants to know when they're going to die, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we're all going to die. Let's just try not all to die at once, you know? <laughs> yeah. Or at least not two billion at a time. Right, exactly. With the 4,000-foot wall of water coming, right? <laughs> so I've been, I was thinking uh, about last time when we conversed. Um, so in the awakening process of most people, is that them basically overcoming the little piggy in their brain? Is that what that is? Uh, I, I would imagine most uh, people don't realize they have a piggy in their head or neck. Right, but is that is that what's going on? Like, you're, cause but that's, overcoming... that's basically uh, once you you come to the conclusion that you're basically a walking robot, uh, right. reacting to things that maybe would not be your normal reactions, doing things that seem uh, directed uh, and, and you stop and you take a breath and you say to yourself, what's going on here? What's really going on? And there is no no answer. So you start right. to search. And uh, if you search in the right places with the right tools long enough, then you start matching together the things that you learn with your intuition. Right. As soon as that happens, you're basically circumventing the control mechanism. Right. And, and you start to see clearly you study it long enough, you find out exactly what happened. Now, do you know of any other point in history where someone else has um, at least come as far as you have, but maybe not have went public or just because of the technology of the day, they, they weren't able to? Or I, I have uh, searched um, and listened to people talk, uh, and I have not been able to find anyone who sees this uh, situation as clearly as I do. Not because I don't want to, because I would prefer to have a group of people who are basically at the same level, but I haven't been able to find those people. Have they existed in the past? Possibly. Uh, would their story have been told by the media? Never. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Would would there be a place you could look up a list of names? No. So uh, it's it's pretty difficult uh, to conclude that uh, uh, with billions of people that have lived, that no one else has ever gone through this process since certain that uh, there are many, many thousands of people whose DNA had lived before and who were reconstituted and, and placed as a, an egg within a surrogate mother to <laughs> carry them to turn. Again, and those people would certainly, over time, have uh, intuitive knowledge of that, and if they could access it, they would know. So, would that only be in the elite caste that that happens? I I would suggest that that's where it began. <laughs> But the elite caste is not 
what we think of it as being elite. It's uh, it's mostly priestly caste, right? And nuns. <clears throat> Monasteries would have been the perfect place for uh, genetic engineering experiments. Nuns are known to be attracted to uh, uh, child welfare environments, uh, uh, places where children are supposedly abandoned, That would be a great cover for themselves giving birth to uh, to children and then needing an explanation of how the child came about. Well, they say, you know, we we have this uh, lobby and we advertise that if uh, women are going to get rid of uh, a baby they don't want rather than putting it in a garbage can someplace to bring it to us we won't uh, we won't photograph anything we we'll allow them to put it in a basket and the basket can be turned into the inside of the cloistered monastery and that kind of stuff but all the time that could be uh, just a cover for i'm uh, familiar with some uh, girls who join nunnery and uh, the uh, taking of the vows at first uh, allowed them to operate internally within a, a monastery nunnery. And then all of a sudden, for what appears to be no no sensible reason, they pack their bags and leave. And it's not basically that they don't like the service aspects of what they thought they were joining, but they won't talk about it. Something fishy, huh? And I imagine this process went on with Vestal Virgins, if you go back in time to the priestly class, ancient Egypt. Rome, Greece, that that, mm-hmm. that uh, kind of activity, and some of the pictures, of course, in uh, in um, Mason encyclopedias are suggestive of that. And there's one of the Keeley papers, for example. If you look at the site, you'll see a priest uh, speaking to what is supposed to be a messenger, and she's sitting on top of a tripod. Right, 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 right. The hole down below. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, that That's pretty suggestive of uh, uh, turning over eggs. Huh. Okay. A hysterectomy, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And, and the millions of uh, children who were murdered in in ceremonies uh, the Inca tradition and, and Mayas and old texts and told Mechs and what have you all the way from Peru to, to Mexico suggest that there was a reason why they needed to sacrifice people. And then there is a um, also kind of a uh, highway on the sea that one can trace uh, into the he- Hebrides above Scotland and on the way to Iceland and Greenland uh, where Basically, religious groups set up uh, different communities and their their um, stone layout and stuff like that suggests that ceremonies were going on where there would be a, an altar 
on which uh, there was supposed to be a, a consummation of something or other, and suggestion is is genetic engineering based upon a calendar. Uh, the signal would come as light entered a certain window and and hit the the stone altar. The priest would be available to implant an egg. The story of the Virgin Mary is is basically all about artificial insemination. The, right, yep. the crucifixion of of Jesus, if you read the details around it with the uh, Nicodemus, and then the spear on the side to extract DNA, and <laughs> the the calendar of events that makes no sense uh, on uh, Easter weekend. And in yes. fact, they uh, they say that he uh, he was crucified and born again three days later. But the timeline they give is from Friday night to Sunday morning, and that's just a day and a half. <laughs> so absolutely right. Yeah. What happened to the other day and a half? And my suggestion is Mary Magdalene is key to much of this. That. Uh, if if one reads the story of Mary Magdalene, one can be misled into believing that she was living concurrently with Jesus. I mean, the whole story is just an allegory, but right. that's the story that one could read because it says, that, and Mary followed Jesus, But there's two definitions to that. Mary followed Jesus could be Mary was made from the DNA of Jesus, and that would explain the missing day and a half where uh, the Marys were present when the stone was pulled back, well, present in in what sense? Did Mary, who gave birth to Jesus, receive a second implant? And was that second implant confirmed as having taken? Uh, by the time they opened the rock, pulled the rock back from the cave, and is it just basically suggestive of the fact that Mary, the mother, was in fact pregnant again? And that's basically how they do it today. I mean, it's like I told you uh, about uh, being called in and and asked if they would want to be wealthy. The wives of some mason gets called, and right? Yep. Offered an opportunity if she'll carry this egg to term. So that's all of those things are suggestive. Genetic engineering in modern times was used to create. When I say modern, I mean post-Ice Age. (laughs) Post-Ice Age, they needed people who would go into other people's camp. And, And certainly a woman is more likely to have access than a man. Arranged marriages would then follow. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Brotherhood of the Bell. Yes, yes. Uh, there's the same kind of story in there where the the wife 
of Glenn Ford in that movie is um, more interested in her own family and reporting back to her dad what her husband right. is doing. That's uh-huh. the, that's the purpose of arranged marriages. Now that was fine in in the days when priests began to download portions of their their uh, tasks to what they called a king, which is basically a, uh, another name for Ginny, I-N-G, which is used by a bank in Holland, uh, with a K in front. The K is basically the symbol for a mission. If you look at the straight line, that's the lifeline of a person. But partly along the way, that person is given a mission that takes them off in another direction, and from below comes a support structure to hold that new direction in in line. That's my life story. I mean, I, I was uh, constantly being pulled back from one experience, one set of circumstances that would provide experiences, and then someone would show up uh, and I would go off to another set of experiences, and then someone else would show up, and for whatever reason, once I learned the lesson, I had to change directions. So politics, religion, business, small and large, uh, uh, labor, uh, management, all of those things were all kind of setups for me. Right. Now that I look back upon them, at the time, they didn't seem that way. And at the time, at many times, I didn't feel that I had uh, finished what I was there to do, but bang, off to something else. Looking back today, I I think that in this life, I probably lived uh, 10 or 15 different circumstances, uh, of my daily activity that taught me lessons. And each time there are people involved who prove out at the end not to have been what they claim they were and more are more likely to have been uh, a support structure during mm. this period in time. That's interesting. It's like it's like having a butler, or having a wife, or having a a um, an employer, or uh, a friend uh, who pays particular interest in certain activities and. think of them as what they appear to be at the time, but then you you stop and you say, why do they call the trophy the arts and entertainment industry Oscar? (laughs) The butler, right? Yeah, the butler did it. (laughs) The butler can be there for good reason and can be there for the purpose of keeping you in check and, and knocking you off. Right. Uh, Guiding you sometimes, right? Yeah. But in in the text of the word Oscar, you have to convert and see what it gives you. And since an O can be an I or a 1, because you're looking always at number 10, even though the word Oscar starts with O-S, 
you have to do a mental exercise that says number two is number one. Right, masonry, right? It's like that? Yeah. So the S goes before the O, and the O can be an I. So mm-hmm. the two letters together say C, which means yes. Yes. And then you're left with car, which is a vehicle. So yes, it's a vehicle. It's taking you someplace. Of course, in the arts and entertainment industry, uh, the level at which you would be offered employment changes if you have an Oscar. Right. And if you join certain societies, such as Scientology, you move uh, faster than if you're not a Scientologist. You may never go anywhere if you're not a Scientologist. Huh. What is Scientology's role then with this? Well, as far as actors, guild, and stuff? It's like. just another secret society with its origins in in religion. They don't call it religion, they call it uh, morality. But morality is a play on the word Roma. <laughs> Romality. Roma, it, why. Roma, it, why basically suggests that at the end, you become two in one. That's the symbol of a letter Y. Two in one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the it, huh? Yeah. So, it's an it. <laughs> yeah. Not a he, not a she, an it. It's the third kind. But the third kind is also triune, uh, right. partly female, partly male, partly Neanderthaler. All put together gives you 99%. Hmm. So they're still incomplete? Or? They are basically working at uh, getting exactly what they want. And, and the genetic engineering of creating a triune person is complete with the 10 this year. Uh, 10s are being placed in positions of power outside of marriage all around the world today. Mm. What appears to be women in, in the sense of a Hillary Clinton or on the right. rights or, uh, the French, yeah. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of them all over that all of a sudden are appearing and taking positions of power, even in business, at Hewlett Packard, for example, and at uh, Yahoo. So the ten is in place. But the 10 is not the perfect person yet. There's got to be an 11, a 12, and I suggest the final version would be either a 13 or a 14. Hmm. It's like computer programs, huh? Part of that is physical. They, you know, as Jacques Rogue said a month ago, as far as the Olympics are concerned, he expects women to have uh, reached the level of men within 10 years. Wow. Well, that can also be done by making the males or, or modifying the males, right? So they're yeah, not as. The, the, the joints and, and hips, the elbows shoulder movement, all of those things, it, it's its a sculpture, you know. It's a fine tuning. The basic structure is there. You know, right. You've got the yeah. Tiger Woods uh, type of person all around uh, Federer, 
Nadal in tennis. Uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, got, Any of the greats, huh? Yeah, cyclists. Gretzky. You know, the, they know for a particular sport what direction they need to go, and they need some fine-tuning, and that's what Tiger Woods is going through now is modification of the knee joint somewhat to uh, uh, allow a better movement, and then if that works, they'll make sure it gets put into the, the new batch. But the no, women but... Are, are key because they are the model on the outside. So even though right. they pay attention to men, their purpose is simply number one. And in this world of secret societies, number two is always number one. It's always you, you ignore number one and you move on to number two. Hmm. That's what about, why on your clock, the smallest unit of time is what? Say this again? I'm sorry. A second. Oh, a second. A millisecond, right? A second is the smallest unit of time on the clock. Why on the clock, right. Call right. it a first. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That's interesting, yeah. Why didn't they call it a first? Yeah, because <laughs> number two is num- <laughs> number one. Right. <laughs> so is that only with, uh, say, athletes? What about as far as mental? Same thing. Pulitzer Prizes, Nobel Prizes, uh, they are the equivalent of Olympics. Musicians, same thing? Yep. Wow. And and you know much of the uh, credit writers take credit for has nothing to do with them. They're given information. Right. You know the theory of relativity. Give it to a guy called Einstein, and and anybody who takes the time to look at Einstein's background. You know, he wasn't great in math in school. Yeah, true. Uh, That's true. He was basically a clerk in a place where he would have access to a lot of secret patent, stuff, right? a patent office. And if he if he agreed to perform certain tasks, like informing the system about patent applications that might be important to them in the future where they could uh, cut this person short, uh, steal his patent or, or knock him off or you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that would bring after a while a situation where a reward was uh, owed. Uh, a guy might have come in with uh, a piece of paper saying, uh, Albert, read this. Now, you know enough about uh, mathematics now that you've been in the patent office for 20 years, but study this in detail and then make an announcement that you came up with it. We'll back you. Well, that's, that's how they get paid off, you know. Why why is uh, the top physicist in the world leaving England this summer and going to Waterloo University in Ontario? He's basically part of process that we'll see the destruction of southern Ontario and and uh, Michigan mm-hmm. and the reconstitution of the Great Sea that uh, used to be where the Great Lakes are today. Uh, 
Stephen Hawking would have no reason whatsoever to be in southern Ontario, except if it was something spectacular that they were planning. And they needed his advice. And they've kept him alive, and they've gave him a position of honor and made him an author. Therefore, uh, he owes those people are instant gratification seems to be the, the biggest interest they have. Yeah. They, want, they want recognition. The old ego, huh? Yep. Now, on uh, you end a lot of your your articles with the sculptor, and you say uh, from 1776 to 1867, I believe, right? So. What is the significance of that, the date uh, and the name? 17 and 18, 8 and 9, uh, 98 is the figure they use for the end of the world. Um, 67 and 76 are used uh, in a lot of different places. Uh, 67 basically means the survivors, while 76 means deep sixth. You're being altered in one direction or another. That's the seven stands for that. Okay. You were God or you will be God. You have to remember that all of this was originally written from uh, right to left rather than how we read it from left to right. Hang on just a second. I've got to go move something here. Sure. sure. So 1776, the U.S. and the Illuminati were constituted and I suggest to you both will be destroyed. Hmm. Uh Uh, 1867, the incorporation of Canada. I suggest Canada will take its place. Hmm. That's right. Now, um, what would you think the significance of, uh, say, Obama swearing on the, the same Bible that JFK and Lincoln used and the Bible being closed, like what was that? Instead of open, I guess. I I didn't uh, stay and watch the actual ceremonies because to me that's that's a given once once they've agreed. Uh, the the significance of Abraham Lincoln was basically his relationship in in uh, imagery to Uncle Sam, the clown with the big hat. <laughs> he he was no more anti um, slavery than uh, uh, the governors of Alabama were in the fifties. It was a role that he was playing. Kennedy and his brother appear to have hit the wall. Although they never went public with what they knew, they appeared to have uh, a change of heart. Not necessarily because they were nice guys. Uh, More likely because uh, they could see long-term benefits going away from their own families. 
onto some other families like the Bushes. Uh, okay. and, and they decided not to play the game anymore. Therefore, uh, if you have a secret and you're not telling anyone, you're a danger to the system. The response is you're killed. If you have a secret and you told someone, then it's too late for uh, the out-and-out killing of the person, such as shooting them in in the head. Uh, You're more likely to be um, ignored, ridiculed, sometimes killed, but in a way that would appear to be natural. Right. Uh, An activation of uh, uh, an impairment can be physical or mental. Ronald Reagan, you know, at the end of his life, was not Uh, able to share (laughs) uh, (laughs) why why he was handing out jelly beans to people. (laughs) Like Ali, too, something like that? Ali, yeah. Ashes Clay. Yeah. <laughs> he had it in his name as well, because uh, the original pottery was uh, clay. And and once the system worked with it, it added a porcelain finish to it and made it much more valuable. And that's basically what... Cassius Clay evolved through during his, his boxing life. He was would have been just another boxer, but they um, they promoted him in a way that would be comparable to a porcelain coating on a on hmm. I don't know how you guys pronounce it. Uh, yeah, same as me. And now he has a daughter too, that's a fighter. Yeah. Taking care of the the family can be uh, an excuse that a person gives, you know, uh, doing it for the sake of other people. But it's not true. It all comes down to instant gratification. Hmm. Whereas yep. if you have lived many lives before, and your uh, DNA has been reconstituted, and another surrogate carries uh, you to term, uh, each time you bring with you uh, another lifetime of experiences. In, In the book of Enoch, I don't know if you're familiar with, I've heard of it. Eh? I've heard of it. Uh, You talk about it too. About uh, 3200 BC or something of the seventh generation down from Adam and Eve. Um, His his basic story is one of genetic engineering. He uh, he brings his son. Did I tell you this before? No. He brings his son Methuselah to a building in which they enter at the top and go down. And at the ninth story down below, they wait and up comes God from supposedly the tenth story, I guess, down below. And God tells Enoch, which, by the way, his his name uh, is the word one, E-N-O, Eno, one. Uh, and, and C-H is another way of saying the letter K, which basically means a mission. So Enoch is, uh, is told that he has a special role to play in 
history of mankind. And, and this is basically, you know, 700 uh, years after uh, the Adam and Eve story, which is supposed to be the rebirth of mankind on Earth. Right. Yeah. In in that story, he's told God has a um, a plate with the inscriptions on it. Some suggestion is that it's made of gold. Other suggestions made uh, of more valuable material. In any event, it's not the plate as much as the information that's on there that matters. And uh, Enoch has his son Methuselah with him. God takes the plate, which is either a square or a rectangle, and cuts it vertically across the corner to corner, and therefore makes two triangles. Gives Enoch one half and says, this will prove to you that we know about everlasting life, and I would like you to pass it down through your family your son and their sons and so on um, until such time in the future as um, that piece I gave you and the one I am have in my hands and I'm taking with me as I go back down uh, come back together. And then Enoch and Methuselah leave. Now, you don't hear much about Enoch after that, except you know him explaining to other people what God says. There will be a destruction of the planet. Mm-hmm. He then passes the plate over to Methuselah. Methuselah is basically known only for one thing, and that's the length of his life. He's um, supposedly about 963 years, I think it is. Oh, that's it? Hey? I said, oh, that's it? <laughs> Beg your pardon, I didn't hear. I said, that's it. That's a pretty short life there, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, the suggestion one has when one goes and reads the story of that time is that he, Methuselah, follows up on two other people. One who lives 300 and some years, another one 700 and some years, and he 900 and some years. And to me, that's suggestive of the fact that the half plate they got was linked to genetic engineering and using DNA in order to manufacture clones. Right. And and therefore, when they say someone lived 333 years or whatever, they didn't really mean that. They basically meant they had sufficient DNA to clone the person more than once, since they probably lived about 50 years at the, the time, uh, right. Right. You, would, you would probably think they had enough material to do it seven times. When you talk about 700 years, 700 and some years, uh, they probably had twice the material. But when Methuselah lives 900 and some years, no one lives longer afterwards. And to me, that basically means that 
they went from making clones from DNA to Methuselah, who was made from DNA found in the marrow of the bone, which is therefore stem cells, and stem cells can be made to make more stem cells, so there's no sense in giving a longer life than 900 and some years because, in fact, people made from stem cells can be made over and over and over and over and over again because you never run out of material. Right. You're constantly making new stem cells if that's what you want to do. And, and uh, my suggestion is that in New York State, at a place called Elmira, uh, this uh, plate was transferred from the hands of the person who had it at the time uh, over to a guy called Joseph Smith. And from Joseph Smith and the Latter-day Saints, uh, you can derive uh, a story of modern-day genetic engineering, today's genetic engineering, that the church was divided in two, and one division called the Mormons, which is a play on the word Roma, uh, became the public face, while the Latter-day Saints themselves uh, uh, had to explain to the world how come they had all of these kids running around with only one male around. And in my view, it's, it's not a matter of polygamy. It's a matter of insemination uh, on an altar in a temple of the Latter-day Saints as we saw in Texas last year, I think it was, when they showed the uh, gang from the Children's Aid Societies going in and taking all the children away, and then they had a TV camera looking at the entire building, and the main hall had basically a stage with a, an altar in front of the stage, where I suggest that that's where a person got to be a surrogate mother, hmm. and the children there are not necessarily the children related to people around them, but they could be children of any of the successful Mormons, plus the fact that they went to Salt Lake City and they dug a hole and they, they do genealogy and all of that stuff is all suggestive of their contact. That Mitt Romney would be playing an important role in all of this, uh, since his dad was uh, governor of Michigan, and Michigan, the lower peninsula, is made in the shape of a mitt, and it's what's intended to be uh, collapsed soon uh, from a place called Cadillac which has caca in it, you know. They, they use the term of uh, body evacuation, caca being number two and PP being number one. So with a word Cadillac, you have CA at the front and CA at the back, AC. And in the middle, you've got a dill pickle. Cad dill. Cad dill, yeah. So a dill would suggest um, seasoning, uh, black water, uh, and you want to prepare some meat and uh, have it nice and tender, you season it, and, and that's what they intend to do with the central part of the United States is begin the process there at the Great Lakes have uh, 
southern Ontario and Michigan collapse, therefore joining all of the lakes together. The uh, water coming in from the ocean would uh, increase the level of water below Niagara Falls. They've done something to Niagara Falls, and I suspect it's probably been uh, wired for explosion. I happen to be flying over Niagara Falls. Uh, I guess it was in the early 80s, and it was empty. And and this this was on the American side. There was no water. And they had set up coffer dams, and they were claiming they were repairing it. <laughs> of course. Yeah. And uh, But I, I suggest it may be the opposite, that they were mining it, placing things for the appropriate moment. So you're you're going to see... I don't know if you know Ontario enough to know that the St. Lawrence River becomes Lake Ontario at Kingston. And just before you get to Kingston, uh, you have the Trent Canal system. And the Trent Canal system goes up to Georgian Bay. So everything from that area going west is shaped like an arrowhead. We love marrow, and arrow is a symbol. And is that by the Canadian Shield, or yeah, it's just beside where the Canadian Shield would be, so it can be destroyed. In order to change the location, because in the mythology they talk about Southern Ontario will survive. And they fooled people into thinking that by going to places around Niagara Falls or Lake Erie that they will survive. And they say that the Rainbow Bridge collapses as people are going across it. But in fact, southern Ontario wouldn't be there if that had already collapsed. Southern Ontario would be where I am, which is in the today's eastern Ontario, uh, above uh, the uh, Lake Ontario, going uh, towards uh, Montreal. Uh, therefore, 44th parallel, and I'm at 44.5. Is, is probably where the St. Lawrence will come to. Montreal, uh, of course, will not be where Montreal is. Uh, it'll be a much smaller island if anything survives, which I suspect the St. Joseph Oratory on top of Mount Royal would survive where they have the big cross, illuminated cross at night, to tell you that you're about to be crucified. But everything below that, which is the the ordinary people's Montreal, would, would in fact be flooded by whatever is done on the Atlantic Ocean. It would be sending a wave straight up the Gulf of St. Lawrence, it would pass Montreal and flood it. And, of course, all the native communities that are on islands, uh, Ganasataki and, and uh, Karnawaga and those places would, would all be underwater. Uh, and that, again, fits into the modus operandi. They always begin a process of destruction by killing what we would call insiders in the system in order to buy deniability in the future. And they started World War II, and they 
set up concentration camps in Poland, the first people they arrested were gypsies. Gypsies are Roma in Europe. Uh, next gang they arrested were gays. The next gang they arrested were Freemasons. And then they moved on. The fourth is what it's really all about. And, and they, uh, they arrested Jewish people, not Judeans. The Judeans okay. stayed back and earned the benefits of uh, being a victim. Whereas yeah. the Jewish yeah. paid the price. So here, I, I'm certain because Native people have been told that there would be a cleansing and that they would survive and, and be in charge after. Um, they've been lied to. The Amish will survive, not the Native people. The Amish have a name linked to the Neanderthalers because the Neanderthalers live in the Moho discontinuity, and the name they gave to that place is Sima. Sima has the same letters, except the H, as Amish. In French, it makes the word Ami, which converts to friend. But friends are not basically safe because the word friend if you read it from the second letter it's uh, the French word rien rien means nothing zero <laughs> and that's why nuns are called nuns <laughs> because they are friends of the system now but at the end they will be nuns well, I, I took your advice and I uh, I purchased a Freemasonic encyclopedia. I think it's from 1898. Yeah, I think I have that. Yeah. that but I, I only have the volume five, so that's the Scottish Rite volume. Yeah. Lucky I found I've got it. But the rest of them. So. So, what tips would you give me as far as diving Read it into from it? cover to cover? Don't right. skip a word because nothing is in those books where you would expect to find it. And if you want to be surprised at certain things, there's no way to search for it in a book. You've got to read it from cover to cover and read it with a um, highlighter in hand. Oh, really? I don't know if I could highlight a book that old, though. <laughs> That's what... See, you can't hang on to instant gratification. You've got to set that aside when you're on this project and say, okay. this is a book, it's got information, this is how I retrieve it, and I don't care if it's worth a million dollars today and nothing when I'm finished. Okay, I, I get you. I only got it for 12 bucks, so it's all right. <laughs> so, uh, don't worry. Okay. Okay. And, I'll take and that. no book is is of any real significance written after World War One. Because okay. it's it's been too manipulated by then. As soon as they began public education and people like you and me got to learn things, they didn't want the information they used to give to be available. Right. So they've can, changed dictionaries and they've changed encyclopedias and stuff. So that book is the 1800s. Uh, it's um, old enough to have some information that was intended for only those insiders because nobody else had an education. And therefore, you will find things. You should find things. I, I read... Uh, the entire encyclopedia is seven volumes, two different editions, and the American Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, which is in two books. Uh, read all of those cover to cover. I don't remember today 
where I found what. I just know that when I got finished, I knew things I hadn't even guessed at before. And it's not necessarily what's in the book, uh, but it's what it hints at that if you're open-minded, you will see along the way. Uh, One example of that is there's a coding structure in one of the books called uh, Brown. The uh, Brown unlock two keywords, and they use the vowels. What that suggests is that they used letters as a code, but I didn't bother spending much time learning about that brown specific code because if they put it in a book, they don't use it. <laughs> That's interesting. So, I to change gears, but um, I'm just curious about the way they um, categorize years, like with BC and AD. Like, what would What's the significance of counting down like versus what we're told in school and what you found? You know. the, the calendar they use is precession. The markers they use are polar stars. So right. In 12,000 B.C., there was a different polar star than Polaris. And in 7500 A.D., there will be a different polar star called Alder Amin uh, instead of Polaris. And that's all because of uh, how the Earth rotates in its orbit and and wiggles and changes position, that that type of stuff. So... uh, BC yeah. is is basically um, the time of Egypt, Iraq, and the Hebrews. And AD is the movement into the West. From the center, you now move to the West. And that means Greece and Rome and Spain and France and Germany and 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 the, the makeup of all of that region that will in fact establish a laboratory uh, which is had its boundaries predefined that Mexicans would would create a boundary to the south and Canadians would create a boundary to the north and and then the focus would be on the US and it would be given a time frame uh, time frame uh, to come up with uh, a way to travel beyond the solar system an ability to live in space. Among a number of other things, that is the big priority. Since there is now, on its way to the edges of the solar system, should pass uh, Neptune this year and enter the Oort cloud I forget it's in 2010 or 2011, which means then it has escaped the um, uh, solar system and gone back to the place of origin of the planets, which is where all remnants and comets reside in a band uh, uh, encircling the solar system. It, uh, the U.S. has, in fact, completed its mission, and its shelf life has expired. Therefore, uh, 
it's suggestive that Chicago is the place from which the transmission of the energy that will destroy uh, all of uh, the United States uh, mainland uh, will occur. The angel that they give as being responsible for destruction uh, is Raphael. And since there is a public uh, Raphael these days as number <clears throat> one, uh, you can suggest that the time has arrived. Rafa Nidal the tennis player, who is now number one, and Federer basically had to step aside to let him in, and it wouldn't be surprising after his year if Federer went back and took rightful place, but right now they're in Australia playing there, and we'll see how long Rafa remains in position of number one. But my educated guess, and you got to remember, this is the key point you have to remember. There is no such thing as a prophecy. Forget your ancestors telling you there was. What there is is a business plan. A business plan requires someone to press a button to start it. Right. And therefore, no one can tell you the date, the exact date that that person will press the button, especially since I tell them I know. (laughs) So my educated guess is that They had planned all along to press the button on November the 11th, 2011. Hmm. All I can tell you now is they must press the button within their window. And their window began in 1998 and ends in the year 2018. And it has a give or take extension of two years. So (laughs) it could be 2016, the deadline, or it could be 2020. But within the period, and now we can forget 1998 to 2008, the first half has gone by. So right now we're in the second half, and number two is number one, which is more likely. There will be one of the three events that will kill millions of people, if not billions of people, before 2020. And 2020 is significant because it says that by that time, people will know what I'm saying is right. Because when you see 2020, you see clearly. Ask any optometrist. (laughs) Oh, man. And by then, it'll be too late, right? It'll be too late that. for phase one. Yeah. But there are three phases. This is like baseball. You mm-hmm. either strike out or you hit a home run. Yep, yep. And which of the, first, of the three phases are going to come first? I don't know. I just know that there are three activities one must be on the lookout for 
water coming in onto the land and the land collapsing below sea level. That's one of the phases. Another of the phases is uh, rocks falling from the sky. The third activity is a nova. A nova basically means that the earth is on fire from below. It is what the Bible called Gomorrah, fire and brimstone. Try to imagine that everything you walk on gets hot and begins to melt. Mm -hmm. Mountains begin to melt. And it mixes in with the water and it turns into the equivalent of a hot quicksand until such time as the two oceans reach each other and what you then have is a vast Grand Canal, wow, or a Panama Canal, but one that goes from the eighth degree latitude north to the fifty third degree latitude north, with the exception of the shield on this side, Gobi Desert on the other side. Mm-hmm. Now, the same be- thing gets repeated on the other side of the Atlantic so that the Mediterranean and the Baltic Sea and all of those things all perform the same functions as the Great Lakes are doing here. And then the Caspian Sea and the Aral Sea. And, and of course, if you look at, at China, it's, it's a New Orleans waiting to happen. It's got uh, uh, area, I think probably 80% of China uh, can be flooded with with less than 100 feet of water flowing in from the ocean. And uh, our friend Brian Mulroney, who used to be the Prime Minister of Canada, is uh, the lawyer for uh, projects that build dams on the three gorges and whatever. So you're going to see those dams crumble, water coming down from above and water coming up from the Pacific Ocean. And how long they will have, I don't know. I know the Chinese have built a railway. Canadians built it for them, built by Bombardier. And the railway goes from Beijing to Tibet to try to get out, and that's, I forget what it is, 24 or 48-hour ride. The French have built a sky bridge to link uh, mountains together between Paris and the Pyrenees uh, so that the people in the know can run out quickly. But all of that uh, escape route planning is useless because the earth is what is going to be falling apart. You're going to see the equivalent of uh, uh, tar, burning tar, come shooting out of the ground and lighting fires and creating smoke and, and... greenhouse effect and and spontaneous combustion and all of that is basically what a nova is all about and that's the reason our uh, friends the troglodytes move to the moho discontinuity because there are two words to remember nova and supernova if you have a planet or a rock in space, 
that has no plates, no oceans, no plates. It's just a rock. And you superheat it the way the earth will be superheated. It blows up into pieces and causes falling rocks upon our heads. But if you have plates on the earth, the energy is dispersed in the plates, and right. it has no effect on anything below the sediment level. So nothing under the sea or under the continents that is from the region of the mode discontinuity or the upper mantle or the lower mantle or the core of the earth is touched by any of this. Hmm. So they have Nova Scotia? Nova Scotia is probably a name given to a place that will see the beginning of this activity. But the transmitter is Chicago. And I suggest that it's the particle accelerator there and mm, the particle yep. accelerator in Switzerland and border with France, CERN, and the particle accelerator in uh, California that will, in fact, be the originators of the spark. So you will get a collapse of uh, water and land into places like the Great Lakes. Everything from one end of the country to the other is on a coal seam, and when the proper collision occurs in the particle accelerators, a spark will be created that will cause the uh, acetone or ketone to explode, which will light the coal seam and burning tar, Asphalt, if you will, will fly all over the place. Mm. When it's done, there will be um, no life in that area, except maybe if there's a, a occasional island, something like Waterworld, you know, showed, you saw the movie, Kevin Costner. within that area. So because you have destroyed land here uh, in in the U.S., parts of Canada, uh, in Europe and Asia, and that land is now below sea level, you have the physics that comes into play, and there has to be a rising of land to remake the amount of land above sea level as there is now below sea level. It's always a balance, an equilibrium that must exist in this, uh, this physics of ours. That means that where I am on top of the Canadian shield, I can expect to rise here. Wouldn't it be like an earthquake, though, to get you to go up that high? Yeah. Something like in your area, mountains collapse. In our areas, mountains grow. Wow. And it would be that rapid? Yeah. I don't know exactly what rapid means. Well, not over millions of years. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's, all of this has to be complete by at the latest 2062 when you take into consideration the windows of opportunity they have. All of these three phases. That means then that the southern hemisphere gets a thousand years more and the northern cap is being created and the Amish are basically in charge of, of 
making sure the land becomes appropriate for farming at a later date. No seed. The Amish will be the Amish in Canada. You're talking about then, right? Well, there no. there are Amish presently in places like Ohio. That region there of uh, uh, Indiana, I think, and and uh, Iowa, um, they will be rushing to cross the bridge. That They'll get word, and then... And then there's another gang, mostly in uh, northern uh, Alberta, near the tar sands, you know, Edmonton region. Mm. Saskatchewan and Manitoba, as long as they're high enough. They all came from Russia. Okay. And what about the the Pennsylvania Amish? Will they just be left there, or they will be making it north as well? They'll be making it north. Uh, The reason I ask is because uh, my father lives near them, so when I see them move, I should move too, huh? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) If you see the wagons getting packed, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit like uh, a guy told me, he said uh, he worked in New York, uh, just, he was working on Wall Street, and on uh, the morning of 9-11, uh, the guy that sold newspapers on the sidewalk didn't show up for work. He yeah, like Abby was weren't there either. Cab drivers took the day off as well. <laughs> they knew. Wow. They they may not have been told exactly what was going to happen, but they were told not to go in that day. And a lot of people in that building complex as well were told not to show up for work. No. Yeah. So you say by 11, 11, 11, right? Yeah. And I say that because they built a new highway from a bridge crossing the St. Lawrence from New York into Ontario at Cardinal. And they called the highway 416, which adds up to 11. Mm -hmm. On the highway, there are signs that say, lest ye forget. Now, that I had never heard except on Remembrance Day. It was always at the War Memorial in Ottawa. Now, the strangest thing is that with the uh, assassins who raided the hotels in Mumbai recently, the reports on BBC uh, always came from New Delhi. The reporter Mm. who was speaking was standing in front of a monument, and the monument is shaped like an upside-down U. And that's exactly the shape of the monument we have in Ottawa as the War Memorial. Mm. And I want you to check something out. Okay. How many words in the American English language have lost their U in the last 25 years? Lost their U, the letter U? Yeah, the letter U, that they discontinued using the letter U in it. That's my homework assignment. Okay. That's my homework assignment? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So go for it. Unless you have a specific question, i got to get to doing my homework. All right. I appreciate the time. Okay. And until we speak again. Okay. Talk to you. Bye. Okay. Bye.